to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Oh, James. What's up, dude? I got a disability. Huh? Ah, I'm deformed. What Don't look you? at me. Don't look at me. What are you talking about? I got my face this morning. Oh. On straight razor. Old, on straight razor. Old tenderfoot. Got a little uh, nick. You know, I've got s- scar tissue on from like repeatedly cutting yourself and then the, you get the scar tissue and that fucking thing bleeds like once every two months mm-hmm. when it bleeds it's a gusher yeah i am i'm losing a lot of blood today yeah it's gonna be a weird show of a feeling it really doesn't take much to take you down no i'm i'm a man oh no I'm a goddamn man rain or shine i'm here look we know you are yeah i we went know out you, you know what i did huh. when, when this was bleeding what you, you were do? like, hey, I need you in it today. And I was like, I'm always in it, bitch. It's Britney, bitch. Yeah. I went outside because it's raining. Mm-hmm. Uh, I took off my pants and I rubbed my balls and dick in the mud. And then I'm, I got back in the game, got right behind the mic, and here we are. And that got you going, huh? Yeah. Wow, that's a, that's a lot for just a little nick. On well, the... I'm brave. Um, I don't want to say I'm godlike, it's just but such a production close. for that little cut. Do you know what I mean? Pretty close it's to such being a godlike. Um, probably lost two liters of blood. Mm-hmm. I'm not a doctor. Um, I cut myself constantly. Never and pretended tell to be. No one. You've never cut your face, though, James. Yeah, I've cut my face. Doing what? Uh, sometimes people get pimples. Um, oh. I've had one like this that what? was a gusher like this. This is nobody knew about it. Vietnam on my face. Didn't even right come now. out to tell you from the bathroom, well. guys. Guys, I'm okay. Is what I, I should have done, right? Hey, guys, I'm okay. I just want to let you know I'm okay. And you're like, what are you talking about? Don't worry about it. I'm okay. I have lost a lot of blood. I demand respect. Mm. I'm like Domino's. I'm here for your satisfaction. Um. <laughs> is that a thing that Domino says? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are, James. Big day today. Big day today. Big day today. Um, I feel sad, and I'll tell you why. Oh, Sorry please. to interrupt you. Oh, no. Apologize for interrupting you. Um, mm. I feel sad today because mm. uh, th- we record this on Monday for the Tuesday night drop. Right. We don't know. The national championship is tonight. Mm-hmm. H- hence, I'm wearing uh, the Ohio State University t shirt because let's face it, we were probably the real champions, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see tonight's game but uh i wish we had the answers there's a lot going on in these games as you know i've been on an unbelievable bull streak mm-hmm. on mybookie.com forward slash drinking bros promo code drinking bros doubles your deposit all the way to a thousand dollars that's on my sports show won over four thousand dollars in the bowl games this year finished 28 and 11 which is this is the best college run i've ever been on ever right dan and i took all of those winnings and threw it all on Clemson. I knew you would not be happy about this, but I thought I would tell you now. Is if you wonder why I'm cheering like extra loud tonight, why would I like, not be happy about it? It's four grand, you know. It's over. Well, it's over four grand, but whatever. Um, we'll talk it about it when when you lose it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was winnings, though. It was all winnings. Hey, so, look, I don't. You're your own man. Yeah. We yeah. both, you know, have our own stuff going on. If you want to blow your side of it, mm, but up do, to you, friend. Do I or don't I? Really up to you. It doesn't affect my account. So it's weird tonight because it, it's I got it at seven and a half. So technically, unless you could win by a touchdown and I'll still win. But um, I, I feel a certain level of angst for tonight's game. My team's not even in it. But it's solely because Dan and I picked this before the season yeah. started and We've been riding this train for a while. So between this, uh, I, you know, we do these pregame shows. Well, we picked the winner way too early in advance. Mm-hmm. Picked Clemson this year. Picked Clemson last year, and we won a fuck ton of money. And then I picked the Chiefs, which our friend uh, Gat was at the game yesterday. I picked the Chiefs to win the Super Craziness. Bowl before the season started. Holy shit. That I, that, I like that kind of drama. Right? Man, that was good. I love a comeback story, an underdog. It was really good. Um. Clemson is one of the only teams that I've seen in person, and it really does. You say this all the time, but yep. it really does make a difference. Yeah. Because 
looking at those boys, they're not boys, <laughs> no. but like looking at those full grown <laughs> men playing against <laughs> tiny little babies, you're like, oh, okay. Like when you really see them and the size of them and, and just how they carry themselves and move, you're mm-hmm. like, oh, that's like a man's team. Nope. And some of the people on the other team are tiny babies. Yeah. Yeah. So it does make so I, I've seen Clemson in person and I this year and so I will say like and you've seen Ohio State in person. And those are fucking grown ass men too. So, totally. Um I've seen L S U personally twice now. Yes. And uh size wise they just don't match up, but yeah. we'll we'll see tonight. I'm excited about it. But if you're the reason I'm telling you this on air is if you hear guttural screams from up upstairs in the screening room tonight. Mm-hmm. You'll know why of like, dude, why does he fucking care this much? I'll be gone. Sleeping? No, I'm going out. Oh, where are you going? I'm just celebrating the Clemson LSU. Oh, the college football season's over? G- game and, <laughs> and season. And I'm going to go out with some friends and watch it. Are you really? At your favorite sports bar, yeah, but have fun with the kids. I just think that's pr- appropriate. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, Is that real? No. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. It'd be pretty I've got hilarious. some things cooking. I might. Mm. It'd be pretty hilarious if you did. Um, Just take the monitor with you up up to the screening room. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Sure. For sure. Um, the the other funny thing is you and I are going to Vegas. I'm going for the McGregor fight, and you're coming in the day after. Mm-hmm. we got a bunch of live shows out there and uh, shit um, to do. Your hatred of the football season and me during the football season mm-hmm. Will be over that night. When when I was thinking about this, when you land, the Super Bowl will be set. There will only be one more game left in the entire season after mm-hmm. that. So it'll be good. I have one request for putting up with all of this shit. What is it? I'd like to go to Guy Fieri's Vegas Kitchen and Bar. Okay, where's that at? And get an order of trash can nachos. Ooh. I, I don't know it's what that is, but link. I like it. Have you heard of the Link Hotel? I, think I have it, actually. Yeah, I think it replaced Flamingo. It, maybe it looks nice. No, Flamingo's still open. Okay. Um, the Link Hotel looks nice, by the way. It's by there, though, yeah. right? Yeah. It's it's uh, it's a brand new one. It's I don't know, kind of like a. It's very on brand. Very winish. Very on win-ish. brand. Um, For Fury. The whole place, just like skull and crossbone, napkins, trash yeah. can nachos. I'm right. so excited. We'll go. You want to go to the last night? I need to go to the last night because I'm. We have interviews and shit. But. Interviews and trying to keep the whole life profesh until then. Shout out to Granny D who's watching the children's mm-hmm. for uh, a few days. Thank God. Um, so it'll be fun. It'll be super busy. Uh, we got some big guests on tap and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited about your new show. Um, drinking broettes. Yeah, we'll be out there chopping it up, Is hanging it out, out with some ladies. Yeah. We've already contacted a couple of your faves and um, should be fun. My faves are your, or your, Oh, uh, sorry, I'm looking at the audience. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Video show, subscribe on YouTube. We're under Drinking Bros Podcasts. All of our shows are now under there. Media companies in full swing. Uh, starting to really kick ass. We just crossed 40,000 subscribers. Good for us. You know? Good for us. Look at us. We're getting big. Getting big. <laughs> We're getting big. We're getting uh, big. Jabes, top story. Of, oh, the day. Oscar snubs. Yeah, there it is. You, you, know, go, you knew it. You go nods, I'll go snub. Ooh. <laughs> You've always been a little snubby. <laughs> I've always followed That's, the snubs, which sounds, aren't really snubs, by the way. That sounds dirty. Dirty. Oh, real quick. Hate to break this up. We got some breaking news. Some breaking news. Cory Booker has now dropped out of the race for the Democratic uh, Party. He was in still? He will still? not be <laughs> president of the United States. <laughs> oh, you know who it's else terrible, dropped James. out? Oh. Yes, your girl. Oh. I think this world will be better served if I leave it. Yeah. Marianne She Williamson. killed herself, right? She's gone. No, she gave no, herself back she, to the universe. She gave herself back to the universe, so um she said I don't need to I don't need to run to be a part of all of your lives. Um, here's what Just I'll say look about looking to the sky. Yeah, she's she's uh, R.I.P. Look for book sales she's through the roof. Um, she's fine. She's fine. She's rich as fuck. Who cares? Rich as fuck. She's hanging out with Oprah right now. That nonsense Opa. wasn't going to play on a global level, anyways. 
Um, you think she would have taken out Soleimani? Fuck no. She would have sent a bunch of love his way. Look, nobody's tried it yet. Oof. Maybe it would Good work. Good luck. Good luck. We've tried everything else. Here's my two cents on Cory Booker real quick since this is breaking news. Um, I have always thought Cory Booker was running to become a vice president. I think he'd be perfectly suited as a vice president. I think he's a smart guy. I actually... I like him. I do too. I know, like, do I want him to be president? I guess not, but, like, I liked him. I don't I don't want any of these Democrats to become president um, just because sure. I don't... I don't see... There isn't one we that I could say, hey, man. don't see a winner hey, man, in the bunch, man. I, I don't. Or anybody that's that exciting where mm-hmm. you're like, all right, or where you get it, right? Obama, I got it. When he mm-hmm. won... Fuck, man. Some of those rallies out in L.A. were just out. They were down the streets just like Trump's are right now. I mean, not to the level of Trump. I would say probably half of that. But still, you're overflowing it. And it's it was an easy call Um, with these candidates. Nobody's really exciting. And I think that was the problem with Cory Booker and and all of these guys where there is no excitement right now. So I think if you're a Biden, for example. If you were a Joe Biden or a Pete Buttigieg, 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 yeah, whatever, fuck him. Um, Buttigieg, Buttigieg in particular needs help with the black voters. Yeah, I think you've got. If he wins the nomination somehow, I think he's got to pick up Cory Brooke Booker and uh, as his VP. Yeah. So look That'd out for ticket. look out for Booker on on a VP ticket for whoever the Biden too man. You know that's Biden's. That's Biden's wheelhouse. Yeah. So I, I would say this. Look out for Cory Booker on, on a VP ticket. The only one I don't know about is Bernie Sanders. Apparently he's leading right now. He is. Uh, allegedly. We'll find out allegedly. in the Iowa caucus. Among who? Nobody asked me. It's going to be fun to watch, though. That's going to be real. If he's leading, it's going to be real fun to watch. Because let's say he wins, hypothetically, right? Does he pick up Elizabeth Warren to complete that socialism ticket? <sighs> She's a woman, checks the boxes. She believes in the same shit. All these debates, she always sides with Bernie on healthcare and a, a majority of this shit. So I think that's your only choice if you're Bernie, right? What a scary thought. Uh, I, don't yeah. think they, I, I don't think they can win anyways. I, yeah, I was reading this article about Obama's advisors um, where they've been secretly meeting with candidates mm. and kind of helping them, guiding them telling them what's been wrong with their campaign and blah, blah, blah. Mm. And you've been lucky to take this meeting, apparently, with Barack and his advisors. In He's got a house in, in D.C. Mm. Um, and they all said, all the advisors were like, the danger, the worst candidate you could throw up against Trump is Sanders um, for the Democratic side. Because he's going to be able to spin that and say, we have an awesome economy. Do you want to give all your money away for all of these socialist efforts? If that's what you want to do, great. And it's an easy, easy narrative for him. They would rather see someone else in there, but they also haven't endorsed Biden, so I don't know what the fuck they're going to do. Mm-hmm. We shall see, Jabes. But uh, let's get back to the Oscars. Jabes, shall we? Nods and snubs. Um, ah, Boy, at the... Ethnically diverse announcers and the whole shit these days is really, really funny. Um, where you're just like, oh, we're just trying everything possible. The the announcers this morning were Issa Rae. Yes. And John Cho. Issa Rae. Who is snubbed constantly. Issa Rae is <laughs> snubbed. She is hilarious. She is super talented. She writes, creates, stars in a really good show. Constantly snubbed, Issa. And here she is. Okay. Um, and what? Hey, I'm going to pull up the categ- one of the categories that she read today. This is really fucking funny. I don't know if you heard about this. I don't know. So, John Cho, I, I assumed they got him there because they thought Aquafina was going to get nominated. Yeah. She did not. I know. Weird. She won the Golden Globe. Strange. Didn't get nominated. And, uh, you know, they. That's a snub. I mean, that's definitely on my snub. Yeah, um, but here's the beauty of this. So they go back and forth with categories. Mm. When it came to, because I was watching this live, when it came to Issa Rae, mm-hmm. she said, um, and the nominations for Best Director are Martin Scorsese, The Irishman, 
Todd Phillips, Joker. Sam Mendes, 1917. Quentin Tarantino, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Bong Jun ho Parasite. And then she looks right in a camera and goes, congratulations to these men. Yeah, Natalie Portman already did it. But um, Oh, she did? Yeah. She did so. it at the Oscars, presenting with oh, no, Ron no, no. Howard. I, well, I think it was at the Golden Globes, right? No, I think she pulled the fucking the real deal. And Maybe. here are and she said, and here are the all men nominees. All male for, nominees. Mm-hmm. I, I'm almost positive. And she was Globes, with but yeah. I think it was Ron Howard. Yeah. And it was like geek. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was baller move. But good for you, Issa, for sure. Um So again, I'm looking at these movies. Mm-hmm. Scorsese and the Irishman, massive monster picture mm-hmm. to accomplish and pull off. The Joker massive monster picture to pull off. Mm-hmm. 1917 is probably mm-hmm. the biggest accomplishment of all of them. Mm-hmm. It'll probably win Best Picture. Uh, just because it, it, you know, you had to shoot that in a World War II movie in one, mm-hmm. uh, seamlessly one shot to look like that. Good luck. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, regardless of what you thought of it, that is a monstrous picture to pull off. Making mm-hmm. L.A. look like oh, 1969 God. again? Yeah. Fuck that. Um Parasite. Everybody loves this goddamn movie. Mm-hmm. That it's the most inventive director. Like, we went all the way to where is it? Is it China, Japan? I don't know. Oh lord! Get, oh, get your production! You turn your phone off together. Um, uh, either way, I, he directed Okja. Like, we have yet to see Parasite yet. Um, yeah, I know he's awesome. He's the best. I know he's awesome. He's one of the best. Who? So who is left? And that's what I thought of today, right? You you have the little women thing, which we bitched about before. I wouldn't be. You're on- out of there for that. You do not do you not de- deserve a nomination against these guys. It's nominated for best picture, though. It is, this but that's is a the different second time, that, though. But that's that a Lady Bird, another movie that she made, right. was nominated for best picture. Great point. Who makes it a best picture? But here's the thing. Great point. Lady second Bird. Second time. When you look at that movie, I, I, I saw that film. Um, the things that make it it's are... It's shot like an independent film. Uh-huh. It's fine as a drama. It's fine as a, as a low-budge drama, right? However, these are fucking monsters. Irishman is three and a half hours. I'm saying Lady Bird was best picture. It is. Last year. Yeah, yes, yes. Or whenever yes, it was. It was. But not and best so director. so is Little Women. But, but not best director. Okay. Because I think Little Women, again, it's a fucking remake, right? There's nothing you can really do to amp that up. There's no. They're just not as big as these fucking movies at all. It's just a harder task for a director, I think, to pull off all of these movies that these dudes were nominated for than to pull off Little Women. Little Women, you have something to go back to. These other movies, you have nothing. You could say Joker, but if you've seen Joker, it is nothing like any form of comic book movie you've ever seen. So. No, I, I say no to the, the women. The marriage story, by the way, I, I watched a little bit of it to try to understand. I, I'm, I'm with you where it's just like that's a hard watch for a married couple. Especially if you're fucking married. Yeah, exactly, right? I watched a little bit of it. Sure. Female director, is it a good film? Yes, but it also kind of feels like a made-for-HBO movie where – it, look, it was made for Netflix. It, it is not a big, gigantic, cinematic film. Mm. I don't think the directing is as important as the acting in that movie. If the acting isn't that good, I don't know, directing-wise, mm. mm. what that movie is without those two actors. Mm. Whereas these fucking things, man, I, I, I can't even name the lead in 1917. I don't know his name. Right. They're unknown. Right. On purpose. But it's a World War II extravaganza, and... These are fucking hard to direct, man. Um, whereas the others, I just don't feel it. Um, but then, you know, on the flip side, you can bitch about that, but then you get to the best actress category. The chick from Harriet Tubman was nominated. They put one in there, yeah. Are you saying but, that makes up for it? No. Okay. But I'm saying they put one in there. Did she deserve that? No. I, I saw, fuck, man, probably half that movie. Mm. She's fine but not great or transcendent or anything else. So I felt that was a giveaway where it was just like, here, take it. You played Harriet Tubman. 
Mm-hmm. Dead serious. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas Aquafina, yeah, people are fucking actually, amazing. Yeah, that she deserved that. That is yeah. a that is a snub to me. Um, I don't care about race or any of that bullshit. Just how good you were. Aquafina was great. This chick, eh, it's fine, but not as great as everyone else. So, do I think they're pushing these around and try to add diversity? Yes, but for the wrong reasons, not because of greatness. But just because so, you guys got to put somebody in there. So we need you to say at the top first, though, the the real gripe is that they aren't given the opportunity to be in the picture because they are black. Right. So that's the real gripe. And but, it starts there. So are you right that no pictures, you know, no actresses, no best picture. They just weren't happening this year. But at the same time, they weren't given the opportunity no and i'll tell you why um let's go to best picture okay no opportunity just in to get the part 100 percent. okay so so it, that's it, the issue and it, we just need to like put that as a baseline and everything else you are absolutely right but we need to say that off the bat but, but that's here's, the problem here's where opportunity starts you cannot control what a script is when it gets made and how it gets put out you can control who you cast correct who you get for director, who you get for all of this. Right. You can control that. However, in the, in the case of this, let's just take the best pictures, okay? Okay. So we'll go down the list and I'll explain. The Irishman. Mm-hmm. It's a true story. Mm-hmm. It's all white people. Mm-hmm. Nothing you can do about that. Right. You can't just throw in, you can't make Jimmy Hoffa black. Mm-hmm. I mean, fuck. There, there's plenty of great black actors. You're mm-hmm. not going to believe it if Jimmy Hoffa's black in that movie. Or Asian or, or, or a different color. Nothing you can do about that. The Joker. Joker's a white character. What are you going to do? Who was, the, who was the female lead in that movie? In the what? Who was the female lead in the Joker? It was uh, a black actress. Oh, yeah. She was great. There was only, fuck, five people in that movie, it felt like. Mm-hmm. De Niro, Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, she was great. But th- that was a part that you could have gone white with that. We didn't. Mm-hmm. Put, a black, put a black person in there. She was great. I thought it was great. Mm-hmm. And, and it also didn't affect me visually seeing the movie, right? Jojo Rabbit is about Nazis in Germany. Mm-hmm. Let's face it. You can't, you can't put anybody in that of, of any color. Mm-hmm. Ford versus Ferrari. Mm-hmm. It's a true story. Ford and Ferrari, the, like they, were, they were white. Mm-hmm. It's a true story. There's nothing you can do about that. Mm-hmm. Little Women. Could you have done that with an all-black cast? Let me ask you that. Yes. Yes. So why didn't she? If you're so concerned about diversity, why didn't... I don't... Yeah. What's her nuts? What's her name? Greta Gerwig. Why didn't she go with an all-black cast? She has the opportunity. It's her story. It's her movie. Right. So it's, it, it starts with her because that... If that is an open interpretation, and I'm assuming... But you're it, just proving my point. No, but here's the thing. So the, the things that everybody's bitching about, you want a woman, you want diversity, you want all this shit. Great. Well, you put a woman in as director. It was up to her if she wanted diversity. Clearly, she didn't. You think it was up to her? Yes. I do. I mean, you're, it's little women. It's a franchise that resells itself. Really, the problem, and you know it's true, is that the people with money have the authority. So she answers, ultimately, answers to whoever made that movie, whatever production company. And that is mostly, as we know, all old white dudes. It's fine. It's just how it goes, right? It so, just, like, had is, she, like the people that are in charge are just. It, it it's is, hard to penetrate. It's really hard to penetrate. You have to you, be. You have to agree with that. It, it, here's the thing, though. It starts with a script. You don't know what scripts are going to get made and when. There is stories that are out there for the Irishman was out there for fucking years Mm -hmm. um, and finally got made. Mm -hmm. Um, Look, if you're looking at it out of these best picture nominees, I stopped with Little Women. I'll keep going. Marriage Story. Mm -hmm. Could you have done that with all black characters? Yes. Talk to Noah Baumbach about that. Dead serious. Talk. Call him out then and say, hey, why isn't this an all black cast? Right. I don't know that answer. Um, but I'm uh, yeah, this... I, d- I do agree with you. It's not the Oscars fault at this point. No, it's not their fault. But it, there is something wrong. It's just not this. T- this is not the time 
that it gets solved in the Oscars. It gets solved before this, right? So I, it gets it gets solved all the way down the line. Right. Um, right now, being outraged right now does you no good. But it does you no good. To, to Be finish. outraged when exactly right. When you get the script and you say to the when Noah Baumbach or Greta Gerwig or whoever and says dating. says to the yes, says to the production company, whoever it may be, um, I would like to do this like this. Mm -hmm. That's where it starts. So you can't bitch until right? But I'm sure Greta is like, hey, look, I'm I'm working on women. One step at a time. <laughs> I mean, Again, if you want to make a difference, blame them. Is, is, that's my opinion. Um, and I'll finish this off real quick. 1917, White, World War II movie. Nothing mm -hmm. you can do about that. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Fuck. It was White, it was the Mansons. It was Sh Cheryl Tate. It was a point in time. Kind of true, where, kind of true story. So, where black people weren't really in Hollywood. Yeah. So it was correct. You know? But that's the movie that Quentin Tarantino wanted right. to make. And it's like, again, if you want to bitch about it, find him. But, dude, he's a champion of black actors. He's he a, made Django. He made Django. He made fucking, what was the one with Pam Greer? Pam Greer. Pulp Fiction. He's a Sam Jackson fucking He's a champion of lover. black actors. So I, I, I can't even get down on that. Now, Parasite. Here's a perfect example of somebody who said, fuck it. I'm going to do what I want. Mm -hmm. And I believe in all Asian actors. I believe in making a, a movie. I, I think the whole fucking movie is in subtitles, too. Yeah, well, I don't think it was made here, was it? No, yeah. but he's saying, hey, I want to make a, a movie about my people for my people. Mm -hmm. He did it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to my knowledge, this is the first all-Asian movie that's been nominated for an Oscar mm -hmm. for Best Picture. Mm -hmm. He did it. So it is possible, but it depends on these people wanting to do that. And how you, when you pick up a script and read these characters, what you think, what race that you think they are or whatever, or if you're trying to just jam in people to make it seem diverse, like that's a big part of it. But these stories, most of these have been written years ago. Ford versus Ferrari has been around for a while. Um, that was a really hard movie to make. And uh, I, I think if you don't get Christian Bale and Matt Damon, that probably doesn't get made, that picture. Mm -hmm. It's just too expensive. Um, period piece with all those cars racing and all that shit like good right. luck right. Um, so I don't know if, you, if if you're a black filmmaker out there why not just make you, know, so it, it, you gotta you gotta start making your own shit so is what it is shooting it and all of it all of it I, look me personally I wasn't happy with, with comedies I didn't enjoy the comedies I was seeing. I paid for them myself, did it myself, cast whoever I wanted. In all of those movies, I, not one time was I thinking about fucking diversity. I was thinking about what makes me laugh and that's it. And who would be best for the characters. Mm. Um, people weren't famous. People were, a lot of people were unknown. Just people I enjoyed in auditions who came in and, and were the best. I did it. If you, if you, if you truly want to make a difference, go do it. I fucking made 11. 11 goddamn films on my own. It's a lot. And I'm not super famous. I'm not super fucking rich. I found a way to make movies. Do it. There, there is no excuse. If you want to tell, if you want to make pictures for, you know, the culture or your own fucking race or whatever it is, do it. You have the opportunity. It is super easy these days. You're not shooting on 35. Everything is digital. And there is plenty of people across America who would love to have you in. I mean, all these locations. I found locations in L.A. too, which is a bitch. I, I, if we were here in Wilmington, Jesus Christ, I could shoot anywhere. People were amped about having a movie there. They'd probably make muffins. Yeah. So wherever you are in America, if this is your dream, you can certainly do it. You can cast. You can put whoever you want in it. You can write your own scripts and tell your own stories. Now, whether or not they become massive worldwide hits is always out of your hands. Always. There's nothing you can ever do about that. I'm sure there's a fuck ton of people. Take Cats, for example. Cats was, what, $150 million? Mm -hmm. They sunk everything into it. Mm -hmm. If you look at that, that's, that script on paper, right? You have fucking Taylor Swift. You have, who was it, Helen Mirren or? Mm -hmm. No, Dame Judi Dench. Oh, yeah, Judi Dench. Oscar Even winner. Even funnier. Um, yeah, yeah. 
James Corden, mm-hmm. uh, Idris Elba. You have mm-hmm. the who's who of everybody across the board. Mm-hmm. And four people saw that movie. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter how expensive or how cheap it is. You do have the ability to have the same fucking thing. The same opportunity to see these movies. Um, Blair Witch, you know, shot that for 13 grand. Like, it is possible. Is it hard? Yes. But it will never, ever stop being hard. Mm -hmm. And the guy who directed Cats, I can promise you, isn't going to be directing movies for a very long time. Yeah. Just because he's the guy who directed Cats. Mm -hmm. And I find it very telling that even Taylor Swift didn't get nominated today. Mm -hmm. At all. Where you're like, huh? I didn't even best song. Nope. We're getting Cats the fuck out of here, bro. Yeah, we're going to pretend it never happened. So I'll get off my soapbox, but... Yeah. You know, if you're a filmmaker at home or a woman or a fucking member of LGBTQ or whatever, I mean, shit, it is possible. It's been done. It's been proven. Like, but you're going to have to do it yourself. If you're, if you're going to bitch about it, do it. Um, for real, there's plenty of talent, plenty of people that want to help you. Um, fuck man, range 15. That was crowd, all crowdfunded $1.2 million. Mm-hmm. Just based on what people, hey man, I believe in you and I want to see this. Mm-hmm. Nobody in that cast is super famous. We got the money and then we hired famous people afterwards. But the, the, the cast that we sold that movie on, no one was famous. No one had even been in a movie. So it is entirely possible. But you've got to go out. You've got to you know, be a champion in social media. You've got to help your own cause and fucking do it. Like, so I, I won't, I, I'm not going to get involved in the rest of this sh- shit about it of how there's not enough roles there is for filmmakers who want to who actually make films now d- don't bitch just because it's a higher budget oh hey i'm not in a studio movie that that that's going to be seen around the world none of us are dude and none of us are guaranteed that ever ever in this life any actor you too you've had a million auditions none of us are guaranteed a role in anything no matter race wh- whatever we are mm-hmm. it's just not a thing um so uh, that being said, I, you know, if we're going to go down the diversity road, the Aquafina was probably the biggest snub. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, she was great. And, uh, you know, the rest of them that are bitching about it, like Jennifer Lopez. No, no. I, and get, Jennifer, that's not a diversity thing. That is someone that thinks, God bless it, thinks they're better than they are. And like, you're great, Jennifer Lopez. Like, you look great. You can dance your ass off. Mm-hmm. You're great in interviews. You really can get something made and good for you. But as far as acting, you have never, ever been good. And it just doesn't happen like that. And um, acting and acting and singing. There you go. Yeah. So the things that you're known for, you can't really do that well. And um, you're great. You're just good enough that all of your other stuff pushes you over the line, pushes you over the finish line. But, um, you know, I heard that movie was good, wasn't amazing. Right. Um, and you got a lot of hype for it because you're Jennifer Lopez. Um, and I think the story was good. It's a real, you know, it's a real story or it's based on a real article strippers on a real woman's life who's now suing them that might have been part of it but um you aren't oscar worthy i I will be very i I don't think i'll see the day it will be a it would be a sad day if jennifer lopez got nominated for any acting for an oscar (laughs) for anything other than like writing a song writing a song or dancing somewhere but uh, the acting thing, she's been really at it for a long time. And um, if it hasn't happened by now, I don't think it ever is. Uh, I heard that Constance Wu was horrible in that movie. Um, Constance Wu. Who's mm, that? She's this Asian diva gal from Fresh Off the Boat. Uh, oh, she's yeah, all yeah. Over the she's press the one who wanted to quit the like, fucking yeah, show. She's... Um, all over the press for horrible diva comments entitled bullshit and um ergo she wasn't that great in that movie um so no i mean that's not a that's not gonna happen uh and i it, it, if they're surprised that's that's interesting to me yeah if they're surprised i mean i don't know uh the other one that people are bitching about is lupita nuango for us um I saw us. She was fantastic in it. However, 
uh, people did not really dig that movie. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the thing that was weighing her down. It wasn't that her performance was great, but yeah, uh, people just did not dig that movie. The end. I didn't. I didn't get it. Me personally. Yeah. I didn't know what was going on at the end. Um, and I think that was what threw that off ultimately. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other one it was a white guy. Uh, it was uh, that Taron Edgerton for uh, Rocket Man. Sang every song, acted in the entire movie. Uh, what happened with that movie? I don't know. And uh, God, we're so su- like we have to see it. Like I don't know. If we, we have to. Even we were gone. Say anything else about it? But I just don't know what happened. I don't know. And it didn't get best picture either. But they are really like. I mean. It's almost like fake it till you make it, right? Like they're just saying it's so amazing so that people are like, is it? Yeah. When I saw it, maybe it's me, right? You go, <laughs> maybe it's me. That's really what they're making you think. But maybe it wasn't good. Maybe he wasn't good. Maybe he can sing, but there was a disconnect somewhere else. I don't know. I want to see it. Don't know what happened with that movie. Uh, yeah, I got I to gotta f- see it. To, Frozen uh, to 2. It out. Snubbed. I don't get that either. It made $1.2 billion um, so far. It keeps going, by the way. You cannot knock out uh, How to Train Your Dragon from that top spot. I mean, it's been years. Yeah, but how many fucking times are you going to nominate those things? They just keep making them, and they just keep getting nominated. Oof. It's almost like Dog Man. <laughs> like, who's buying Dog Man? I don't know, but it's still, know. it's number one. I don't know. New York Times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's you know the dog man series. It knocks everybody huge. out. Yeah, <laughs> dog man. Um, you know Laura Dern, awesome. Brad Pitt. This is his year. Like I said, it's a pit. He's gonna win. I, yeah, I think he's gonna win. A pit this uh, this year. I think Joaquin, but then 1917 probably. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know of m- many other snubs yeah we'll really. see um is mark Cohn nominated for anything as uh score original song or anything was he did he have anything this year i will say i don't i like how the oscars didn't just put a woman in there just to appease mm-hmm. because like i said this isn't the time like i like that they're like not our fault bro you guys figure it out you start champion yeah. fucking championing women. You, the execs, need to think about it more. Not us. We are literally just watching the movies that have been made and choosing the best ones. Sure. You guys are the ones that make them. The Oscars, for all I know, don't make mu- movies, do they? No. They don't make movies. They don't hire actors. They don't hire directors. It is not their fault. Yeah. Someone is at fault, at large. But, like, right now... Is too late and it's not the time. So the Oscars so white, whatever. The Oscars so male, whatever. I mean, mm. it's a little uncomfortable, but at the same time, right now, uh, is too late to start bitching about it. Uh, look, bitch it, it, a long, bitch a long time ago. Keep moving forward. If you were out there bitching about it, make your own movie. For real. Um, That's not what I mean. But no, no. I, but if you want to change things. Make your own movies, make your own TV shows, like start to do it. Well, maybe the big, you know, the people that do give people money for movies, whatever that may be, even if it's a loan from the bank, everyone, all of those people need to start listening to. Maybe that's who they're talking to. I hope you're not talking to the Oscars, but you're talking to the people that actually give opportunities. And if you're only giving them to who picks the scripts, I don't know who picks the actors. I don't know. A lot of it, look, a lot of these movies depend on, hey, I'm a producer and I have scripts, right? Mm -hmm. Can you get a name? So it's the producers that find the script and then they get... Correct. Okay. So we'll take my first movie. Um, It took me four and a half years to get it made. I went through, and I documented the process. I went through 143 meetings. And on the last one, there was a guy who, you know, and, and at this point, uh, it's it was right before like iPhones, like two thousand six or seven or whatever it was. Um, I, I I show up on my Thomas guide and it's a fucking guy at a shitty diner in Van Nuys who had booked us there. I mean a dirt hole. Like I'm, there was probably five tables in, mm-hmm. in this fucking thing, and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh Christ, I'm not gonna meet the guy who's gonna finance my movie in this shithole. Mm-hmm. 
We sit down, we have a normal breakfast of basic shit, <laughs> sunny side up. And we knew how to make like three kinds of eggs there and, you know, nothing. It's not your L.A. place is what I'm trying to say. Okay. It seems like a middle of America place. Mm-hmm. Again, in no way, shape or form do I think this guy's going to finance my movie. Mm-hmm. He looks at me and he goes, look, I can do this. He takes a cocktail napkin, writes down 10 names and he goes, slides it across the table. And he goes, you get me one of these names as your lead. You will be shooting in six weeks. Mm-hmm. That's it. And that's how it works. Um, The rest of it, you can cast whoever you want and blah, blah, blah. Dead serious. One of those people I knew on there. And uh, sure enough, six weeks later we were shooting. But that's often how it works. Now, Mm -hmm. if you're at a studio, right, the process to go through that is you're selling a script and idea first. Typically not a director, typically not an actor. It helps your cause if you have an actor or a director attached. But... Um, sometimes that is hard. You want to get the writers paid first. So it depends on who your agent is, but that's usually they'll shop the script first. If it's really fucking good. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's pretty good, but you have a good actor attached, the studio will come in and make that script great, but they're amped to have that actor attached. Um, and I've seen this process a million fucking times at this point. So I don't know. If you're a producer out there, a black producer, Mm -hmm. I would start with attaching actors first and then going into the studio and saying, look, here's the movie. We're making it with with these people. Yes or no. Mm. But other than that, you're going to have to start shooting things independently. And, you know, you do have the access of YouTube and everything else right now. Mm. Take Brandon Rogers, for example. I, I think comedy is. Movies and TV is probably the lowest period we've ever had for, for true comedy mm-hmm. where you're not afraid to offend anyone. Brandon Rogers has been on our show numerous times just because we were a fan. I didn't even know him in real life um, until then. He's making the edgiest shit I've ever seen on YouTube right now in today's current climate. Mm-hmm. It is fucking crazy and hilarious. He plays a million different characters. He's turned down multiple deals because he said, ah, I'll do it on my own on YouTube is absolutely making a fuck ton of money. Mm -hmm. And then it comes to the point where Comedy Central calls and says, hey, how much? And we'll let you do what you want. Mm -hmm. And he's going through that process right now. That's awesome. It is all possible. So I I don't know. I have a hard time with that. I do. Well, we're going to have to just agree to disagree on this, which is totally fine. People can totally disagree on Mm -hmm. stuff and be fine. Yeah. But we'll just have to leave it at that where I think it's more difficult for certain people to get opportunities and you say, no, it's not. So that's the answer that we're going to have to leave it at. Y- yeah. I'm saying I don't know what the solution to that is. I'm literally just stating that fact. You know, like, I don't know what the solution. You say go make your own stuff, which is absolutely true. But, you know, you need to get a loan, get a credit card. But like, there's, there's they also even... a lot of female directors out there who are huge who can go in and green, lit, green light. That movie. I don't think is really the issue. And I, I, that's why I don't really like the woman director thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, we don't get as many opportunities, but you know, there's a whole new generation now that actually went to school for directing and they have experience under them. And so that was a, that was a matter of time. And experience, right? So it's just now that there's enough women in the directors like guild probably right. to even fill these spots, right? So that was a thing of opportunity. And yes, they did do it themselves. Not marry many of color, but definitely women have come to a place now where I think their opportunities are out there. I think they're more than they used to be, and I think it's a step forward. Um what I'm talking about is the uh, color diversity. Well, so, I, I can and tell that you, is like again. I do know. I do not know what the solution is, and I do not pretend to know. I, and I do not know whose fault it is, if anyone. I can tell you what insiders have said at the studio level of the difficulty of selling. Absolutely, you need to put butts in the seats. Well, so, he, no, no, no. Here's the thing. Not in America, but here's here's the problem with oh, okay. studio so, films in general. They claim. Studio execs claim, Uh again, this is all behind the scenes, that China, which Mm -hmm. is the biggest box office in the world, bigger than the United States. We're definitely trying to please them now. Correct. Yeah. They do not want to see 
black actors or actors that aren't Chinese. Look, and studies have shown here that people don't want to hear either. So, you know, th that's a problem, but it's that it's like, who do you, you can't make someone go and see a movie, right? But the same person that's bitching, did you go to the theater and watch us? Or did you go to the theater and watch Harriet? Did you go to the theater and watch Little Women? Harriet didn't make any fucking money. Just saying. Like, I know, that's what I'm saying. And then those people are bitching. So it's like, I, I hear it all. And I see it, but it's like, at this point, where do you even fucking begin? A long time. As far as movies are concerned, right? Like, yeah. As far as, which is, you know, I guess that's the representation. But in the scheme of things, is that really the most important thing? I don't know. Uh, we're just in life. I mean, fuck. If you just look at anything you want to do in this life, my personal opinion, this is, this goes back to like 2008 for me personally, where I just woke up one day and I was like, man, if I want anything to happen, any cool shit in my life, I have to do it myself. I cannot depend on one single person. But as a white man, that's a lot easier said. If a black guy sure. got up and said the exact same thing, sure. the hurdles that he has to um jump are way higher than the ones that you do and you both need perseverance you both need get up and go you both need i need to do this one of you just needs to get through more barriers than the other right so but again it, that's it, just reality in right? the entertainment industry though it yeah. is about entertainment and right. how people are entertained jordan um, peele like that is the oh, exactly that, that, he's this killing is the it, only, but at the same time, like, and this is the only profession I can speak on because it's the only thing I've done for right. fucking twenty years. So I, I've I know nothing else besides that. All I know is I can wake up. I have I, I have the ability to wake up every morning for free and shoot something on my phone that is funny or and put out to the world. And whether or not they receive it, it's it's up. To, it is entertainment. At, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, all of this is entertainment. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've shot things that I thought people would love. They fucking bombed. Shot things that I thought were okay and people loved them. Mm -hmm. All of it is subjective. Art is subjective. Movies, TV, all, all of it is. So I don't know. I, I don't think know. It's just, it's worth an acknowledgement and an acknowledgement that we both don't really know where the answer is or where it starts. But I think we can agree that the Oscars is not the place, right? I think that they truly do try and find the best. I really do. And it's not, it's, if it's out there, they will nominate it. If it's not there, they cannot nominate a movie that isn't there. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. They cannot nominate the all-black movie that isn't fucking made, right? But whose fault is that? Yeah. So I think we agree that the Oscars is not the place to be like, hey... All male nominees. No, go see the movie. Yeah, yeah. Natalie yeah. Portman, did you go see? I don't know. Did you go see Little Women? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the theater? That's what you have to do. I don't know. What if Ron Howard would have asked that? What? Just put her on the spot and say, hey, oh. who, what was your female, favorite female director movie? Where'd you see it? Where'd you see it? Did you go pay for it? It's a screener? Yep. Or did you go did you, into the did theater? Did you go into the theater and to pay see it? money? Yeah, uh, it, it's all interesting. But um, we get some sponsors, James. We Put do this fucking shit wagon on the air. Uh, first and foremost, GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. If you're catching this at 8 p.m. tonight, um, there's four hours left on the sale to get 25 percent off everything in the entire store. James, pillows, sheets, mattresses, covers. Oh, this is the last day. Yeah. Four hours. Oh you have four hours left. Because this comes out at I 8 p.m. EST. I promise this is the best deal. Uh, I know it is. Just get a bunch of stuff and get 25% off. It it's is the, best deal. the greatest time to um, be Golden alive Globes, in this by the way. World. Jamie told me uh, Natalie Portman did at the Golden Globes. I, that's what I said. I know. You were right. And you didn't believe I me. felt that it was more of a ballsy move. Maybe no one's done that yet. We'll, we'll see this year. Uh, I, I don't even think there's a host this year. Um, I, you know what? With these nominees, I don't even know. I'd be curious if people tune in. Yeah. Kind of feels snoozy to me. Yeah. Um, whatever, man. Ghost bed isn't. If you're going to take a snooze, do it in a ghost bed. Do it in a mattress. Brother. Damn, oh. brother. 
Um, and as always, the uh, the pay-as-you-go 36-month no-interest program still applies to the 25% off. Um, so go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Uh, get yourself a mattress. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. Ooh. Jabes. Boom, boom, boom. Shaboinkers. <laughs> I actually had... We had some water here, and you you had put some strike. I think you put strike force in all the Shit. all the waters that are around. It's fine with me. Look, I it's did. just a did, surprise because yeah. yeah, yeah, you yeah. think that it's water. Well, in the but studio, but then you go, oh, okay, that's it's just strike force. I'll explain to the audience for people who are watching at home. In the studio, uh, drinking bros is on the other side, um, and then Ross Patterson Revolution's on, uh, Revolution's on this side. Your new studio is being built across the hall. So, like, um, yeah. If you if you have a, a water bottle, because usually I'll, I'll put some strike force in it and then get ready for whatever show it is, right? I just feel like it was here and I sipped I it yesterday it. and it was fine, and then today it were, had were strike you, force. Were you here on Sunday? No, I'm saying yes. Uh, oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before the weekend, I sipped it. Maybe. It just kind of felt Maybe like left you went into my water and put strike force into it. That's what it felt like. No, I'm not deliberately doing it. I would never. It feels like you're just going around to everyone's to water and making them, Jesse, giving, sounds, the, giving the, the whole office a pet. That sounds crazy, um, but it's a great but idea. But look, if you want people to have energy, it's a great idea. you're going to have to roofie them with it. Yeah, it's a real great idea, though. Um, Strike Force Energy's got four amazing flavors original grape, orange, lemon. No carbs, no sugars. If you're on a diet after the holidays right now, this is the best. It keeps you from crashing. I know it does for me. And uh, it'll keep down balls afloat of your... What? Sorry about that, Jabes. Balls afloat? Yeah. Mm. Keep your balls going. I get a 10-pack, 40-pack, 750-milliliter bottle. Here it is, kids. Right here. Boom. 40-pack. Coming right at your, your face and balls. Ooh. Face and balls. Yeah. It's the same you see at uh, 7-Elevens across America. Now you can have them in your house. Tasty you tiny little tin pouch. You rip it open and squeeze Keep it into any yeah. liquid available. Uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com. Promo code. Revolution. Revolution. 20% off. It's revolution. Revolution, yeah. If you spell it revolution, it That's won't. not going to register. It won't work. It's registered. It's <laughs> With the little tilde thing here? No, the. Tilde. It's a tilde. Is it tilde? Yeah, it is. No, just the one little. Yep. It's a tilde. Oh, the little uh, dots. Yeah, just, little dots. no, just the one little. Yeah, you know uh, what I little mean. Little dash. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Forget what that's called. Kind of looks like the an arching the eyebrow. Junk-unk, junk-unk. Yeah, you know. Uh, next up, we got straightrazors.com. Jay's Keep it open. Thank you, Jamie. You dumb fuck. We have guests. You keep the door open. You know. No. Jeez. Don't listen to him, Jamie. Just you know. What? We got guests coming in. What the fuck? What? Lord. <laughs> Checking for somebody? You got you to keep these people in check, Jabes. Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? Rude. Rude. Straightrazors.com, Jabes. I was saying because I'm going to scream in his ear, might as well go unlock it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're not going to have headphones on anyways, ready. Oh, Straight Razor, we have a story about it, but that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you like it? There it is. There. Do you it is. like it? I do. I get, was I got cut? Because I got cut. Am I bleeding still? No. Oh. It's I, a little. I mean, it's do a, I like it? I, I rub it. Oh, do you rub it? Yeah. It's a little. You can. It's a little thing happened. Okay, but it's it, it stopped bleeding. It stopped bleeding, my lord. I got a little too close today. I'm a little hyped up. You already talked about it at the beginning of the show. I know show, I did, so. but I want to I want to reiterate this to the audience. Like, there's a lot going on tonight. Yes, and uh, got a little too am- amped this really morning. Really excited, yeah. People are coming out of the gates strong here mm-hmm. uh, for this last game, mm-hmm. and the city of New Orleans is under siege by LSU fans. Have you seen those clips online? I think it's under tornado watch as well. Is it really? But yeah, it's, it went through Louisiana, not um, New Orleans, but oh, definitely oh, oh. went through Louisiana. Dude, they took over Bourbon Street, and it's. As far as the eye can see, LSU fans, the band showed up like it was fucking chaos. You're right. Uh, the night before last, there was a lot of thunderstorms and shit. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a and home game for like, them. People's like house is gone. It's a home game yeah. for them. So mm-hmm. look, shaved They've up. They've got to win. They've got to win now. No, they don't. I got Clemson tonight. <laughs> Could be colossally wrong and I'm going to get, by the way, if I lose. I don't think so. If I lose Have this, you been yet? Not really. I, I look, I've made, I'm sitting at 81%, 81.2% on the year in college football picks. It's the best run of my life. 
Um, but uh, if I lose tonight, I'm never going to hear the end of it ever, ever. From all those Your fucks. fault, bro. You hyped. You're hyping. No, no, no. They were hyping, and I was just, I'm tired of their hyping. Oh, I got you. I got you. This a, is your answer to their hype. Correct. Um, okay. So, look, shaved up, put a little uh, mustache wax in there from uh, straightrazors.com, threw a little smolder aftershave on, and uh, nicked myself on accident. It was my fault, not the razors. Uh, go to straightrazors.com and get yourself a kit. Get it engraved. They got shampoos, beard oils, conditioners, everything you need to be a real man in this life. Um, I'm ants. I'm hyped up. I'm charged up. Uh, go to straightrazors.com, promo code REVOLUTION. 20% off, 20% off. Um, jobless. Jess. Jobless, the queen. The queen has spoken. Um, she agrees this is oh, a period of... Oh, the actual of, queen. <laughs> yeah, the actual queen. <laughs> I was like, Beyonce, no. cheerleading Pretty queen. Pretty Mercury died of AIDS. Me, yeah. Yeah, so he's, like, that queen hasn't spoken. Front man of queen. Yeah, I and, wasn't thinking. Okay, just in case you were. That was the only one I wasn't thinking, but yeah. So, uh, she, queen agrees. There's a period of transition going on. Um, yes. To, uh, you, since now you're as a we speak, Anglophile, is that what it is? I am not an Anglophile. Yeah, you are. Mm -mm. I'm not. Yes, yes, yes. I'm really not. I promise. You will not stop watching The Crown. It's over, so I have stopped watching it. Mm. But I can't. I wish it was back. Um, So they are having their meeting today as we speak to figure everything out. So we will have answers by tomorrow. Oh, really? We will have the answer of uh, how they're going to proceed. Huh. Yes. Financially independent. Watch out, Megan. Ooh. You're going to have to start auditioning, girl. <laughs> um, Canada. Um, so I think they're probably... Oh, so the biggest news, the most recent news, is they have made a little bit of a threat, tiny bit. Of? Of a tell-all. So mm. what they're saying to the queen, to the palace, is that if anyone knows where the bodies are buried, it's Harry, right? So he said, oh, yeah. he said, you don't want Megan and I to do a tell-all. That would be really horrible. Ah. So that was before they went into the meetings. Okay. I don't, so it's like, it's going to be a dance of like responding to a threat, which I'm sure the queen is like, what the fuck? What is she, 98? Yeah. Poof. Responding to the threat. William has some say because he is in line. So it'll be his dad and his brother and his grandmother that actually have the say. Okay. Right? Um, I don't think any of them want to tell all for sure. No. So they're going to come to some kind of agreement. Not sure what that's going to be. They okay. may still need to do some kind of appearances here and there. Um, but being financially responsible financially independent i mean is so that they can make money for, from their brand which is like the sussex something mm. that they copyright and whatever they have this whole lifestyle brand the whole thing sure and they want to make millions from that and they don't want it to go to the palace essentially oh so boy. they want to separate so that they can make their own money okay from the brand that that they are. Because she, you know. look, she says, the queen says, we support it, Harry and Meghan leaving, but we wish they wouldn't, so. Yeah, again, they support it because there's a threat involved, and they will find a way to make it work for everyone. She's I'm wearing sure. the pants, dude. You got to respect Always. it. Always. You've got to respect dude, it. Always, dude. It's insane. But again, there's something going on down down below that we have no idea about. Oh, what? The power of the pussy is real, and who knows? Oh, Megan or the queen? Megan. Oh. No, not the queen. Oh, Jesus, dude. Okay. Who's banging like, the 98-year-old were, queen? I know, but you were like, she wears the pants. Jessie. And I was like, yeah, I mean, she's definitely in charge. Are you talking about the queen? God. And then you, okay. Yeah, um, magic pussy is a real fucking thing. It's a real thing. <laughs> um, but to be... They have they have Harry behind the scenes too. Um, at this, he's talking to the head of Disney, and then there's like Beyonce and Jay Z talking to Megan here. Mm-hmm. He's talking to, and he goes, 
they transcribed it because he was just talking to them kind of privately but there was a camera right here and he said you know she does voiceovers and the guy was like oh no i didn't know that and and harry's like yeah she would totally totally want to do like the audiobook what he's talking <laughs> to the head of disney oh 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 yes yeah mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. so he was like trying to get her a job got it got it got it's it. like a really cringy very normal husband and wife moment right yeah of like her being like, oh, no, no, thanks, but keep talking to him, right? I, look. She does voiceovers, you know? I thought, hey, she does voiceovers. She's also a fucking princess, but anyways. Uh, but I thought, you know, hey, because you, you read your own audiobook. Ching, ching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't That's know. That's where the buku is, son. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. They don't have a book right now, but yeah. Um, all right. So um, that's the that's the Brit news. A little bit of Brit news. Let's see here. I if I've been looking down, I apologize. Um, everybody keeps messaging me this, and I want to give this person the revolutionary uh, figure of the day. Oh, are we there already? We are there, and Gosh. um, it, this is going out to Maddie Marr. Like my computer and phone has been blowing up, and I'm like, all right, oh. what is it? Um, it's the owner of McSorley's. Uh, just okay. just died. Yeah, um, this weekend of lung cancer at 80. Um, so the odd he thing. He went hard, huh? Yeah, so he bought the bar in 1977. Okay. Um, look, the reason why this is so meaningful to me is if you have read At Night She Cries While He Rides a Steed or um, When Darkness Falls, He Doesn't Catch It, all, all of it with St. James, he's retelling his life as he's on a typewriter in the back of McStorley's old alehouse. Mm -hmm. you've been there before obviously i took you there um mm -hmm. it is one of my if not my favorite bar in new york you get two beers there light or dark and that's it oh yeah that's the beauty of and it. they're not nice to you but that's awesome and it, but that's the way it is they and don't have to be you can either stay or not they, don't they didn't care. even have a a female their first female and they've been it's the oldest bar open in america they didn't even have their first female bartender until 1999 so that's how old school they were about it and it was this guy's daughter mm. um so there, it says here that they're vowing to keep the bar in the family, which is awesome. And um, your beverage options will remain the same as ever. Light or dark beer, and that's it. Mm. Um, so, man. Um, I, ironically, in the new book, um, it's got a crazy storied past. And in the third book that's coming out, the third St. James book, which I'm writing, it starts off talking about the original owner of McSorley's. Mm. And then, so, not if you are curious about it, you'll find out about it in the next one where I actually talk about the, the original owner dying in this third book. Um, so, man, that's crazy. Um, I, look, I love that place. That sucks. But he's, he's also 80. It's a and good went, life. And went hard, obviously. Lung cancer, so I'm assuming it's smoking. Partying, drinking. Partying, whatever, man. But 80 is a good, it's a good age. If I make it to 80, I'll be amped about it. Right. Uh, hopefully I do. We'll see, though. Probably we'll see. won't. Probably won't. That's okay. That's okay. You're goddamn right, that's okay. The insurance policy goes until you're what? 70 right now, so. Ooh. I mean, I'll have to re up these here in a few years, but uh, it gets a uh, pricey. <laughs> well, we better pay it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that monthly gets pricey though. When you get older, man, and they're just like, "Hey, bro, we're uh, gonna need to upseize that." Yeah, you're they're like, to the age we I are gonna die. I know. I don't think your eighty-year-old spouse needs millions of dollars. Like, eh, you know, you might. My, you're younger. Oh, well, I will definitely need You're it, younger. I but... took a child bride, so. Isn't that what you said? <laughs> okay. This was the joke that I was like, I was talking to, <laughs> we were at a table with your college friends. So yes. we're all around the same age, uh, 30s, let's say 30s. Sure. And um, me and this other girl, Brad's wife, actually, we're talking. We got married later. So we like waited until we were like, you know. In our 30s. In so. our 30s. Yeah. Um, Which everybody should do. By but the way. We were like, even then, we felt like, oh my gosh, I'm not ready. 
<laughs> I'm a child pride. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you're fucking 30. But it's like now because it's pushed back so far or just depending on who you are and what you're up to, like the way we were acting, me and her in our lives at that time, we were just like, oh. We have so much. We so we have so many things to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's too soon. All right, fine, right? Child bride. She fucking died laughing. She's like, I know. That's how I felt. Oh, that's we definitely hilarious. are not. We definitely were not child brides. No, no, nowhere not near. Not even it. close. Nowhere near it. Ah, uh, fun we show, were right at our Fun show. Date. Check out uh, Drinking Bro Ets podcast. Subscribe everywhere that it's at. Hopefully, it's out on iTunes at the right time. Jesus Christ. We always get fucking hosed by the man. A fucking Apple, man. It's just... The patriarchy. Yeah. No. <laughs> you want to talk about shutting down a... Uh... You want to talk about snubs? Yeah. How about iTunes snubbing our show? You want to talk about iTunes not... No, we don't know. It an might be out... female show? They hate females. Apple hates females. Look, and so do I. If they only knew, I hate them too. By the way... They might let me on. Um, this is uh, one one more point to get out of here on. Um, women, this is a... Cause it, the nominations just came out like an hour ago. Mm-hmm. Um, now that, that people are having time to digest this, having time to gi- digest this, Jesus Christ, Ross. Um, women have scored a record 31% of all contenders. So, eh. One out of three, Javes. Mm. There is no fucking 31%. DPs. Percent, yeah. They don't want to lug around that equipment. I'm not saying they should. I know. 31% though, that's a lot. Is it? For what the jobs are? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a very small number, but that's fine. It's It's not that small. One third? Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just don't, look, I think back in the day they just didn't want to do that shit, but it's me. It's me. You know? Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> got a stalemate here let's end it on that look we'll talk about it on the all women show i think we're more equipped clash to of the titans so. yes swap one over to to drink a bro ass after this and uh get their get their i don't hot think take you want to talk about it either do you know what i mean like eh, i have my own opinion you're not it. equipped to talk about it and i don't think you want to talk because i got a it. dick yeah because you're a white male with a dick and a mustache and once you get that mustache mm-hmm. i just think opportunities come f- flying at, at you face, and yeah. you don't understand what it's like to not have one okay i mean i do a little bit but i bleach it so you, know you what guys I mean? can shave your bush into anything you want we don't have that opportunity <laughs> do that. yes you do you have no. a bush too look no. you have everything we have plus but plus a, a landing strip isn't going to draw on the ladies on a dude's you have boobs you have a, a bush on a dude's thing you know you have butts no. taints. taints buttholes <laughs> nipples you have everything we have and some so hush. Oh, uh, we're getting out of here. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I'm Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>